It is good to turn the microphone on. Pro tip. All right, we're off to a great start, clearly. All right, again, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Can everyone hear me now? Outstanding. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, welcome to the first master class. So tonight we're going to build a dungeon tile, uh, the same way that we do in the first five episodes of my channel. Um, if you haven't seen those, that's fine. I think uh, what you'll see tonight may interest you to go check them out. We're going to build a whole dungeon tile in real time. So um, should take about 45 minutes. I'll pause every few minutes to check out the chat and maybe answer questions. So if you have questions, post them in the chat and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll try and remember to check every five minutes or so. Um, if you like what you see here or if it helps you out, consider uh, checking out my Patreon. It's in the link in the description below. Or don't. It's perfectly fine. Glad you tuned in anyway. Um, so I'm not going to have a whole lot of hullabaloo here. We're just going to get started. All right. So again, questions in the chat and off we go. So, here's an example of the finished product. Uh, again, if you've seen the channel, you'll recognize these. But uh, you have a, a corner, a field, a side wall. These are a one and a quarter inch square. So the game space is not a one inch grid, it's one and a quarter inches. Uh, the reason for that is your standard miniature that has a one inch base, okay, when you have a wall, it will not fit because the wall takes up some area. So what I do is a one and a quarter inch game space with a quarter inch thick wall. And that means the miniature will always fit the way it's supposed to, even in a corner. So this space right here is the worst you'll ever see, right? It, it's chopped off on both sides. A one inch base still fits, okay? So that's why we're doing it the way that we're doing it. <clears throat> Quick overview of how these are constructed. We're going to use double corrugated cardboard for the foundation. All right, the foundation is the main piece. It's the first piece we'll cut. We'll cover up the corrugation. We'll attach a wall and we'll attach the game spaces. Um, we're going to paint tonight too. We're going to do the whole thing from uh, from the ground up. So tonight um, wouldn't do you much good for this. That's, this is pretty simple. Um, I think that this is the most challenging piece. So we're going to make a corner. All right, what we have here is double corrugated cardboard. Your typical packing box is corrugated cardboard. This is double corrugated because it's got two layers, okay? Um, now what I've got here is a scrap. Now it, by the way, if you can't find these, you know, shipping boxes might come with this. If you can't find it, go to Staples or Office Max and check out those trifold project display boards, the kind that a kid might use for a science project. They're usually made out of this stuff. And that, in fact, that's how I um, got a lot of mine for a while, till we bought a crib, and that box lasted me for like two years. Now this is a scrap, and you may be able to see it on the video or not, but uh, you've got a wavy line here, and this is kind of wavy, so if we want to cut a square, and we want, we're interested in being precise, and since we're doing a modular thing, we do want to be precise. We need to return this to square somehow. So here's how I do it. You can see the corrugation lines in there. And we're going to assume that those are good from the factory. Those are good and perfectly straight. So I'm just going to mark on one at two points. Metal ruler. A uh, lot in crafting is not essential, okay? You, you can have six colors of paint and mix anything you want, right? You only need two kinds of brushes. This, I think, is essential. I don't know how anyone gets by without a, uh, a metal ruler. Crafting knife and multiple passes. All right. So now we've got a straight edge, but we need a perfect corner. So what I have is a carpenter square. Um, this you would simply line up to here on our new straight edge, and you would draw a line and cut along that line. If you don't have a carpenter square, that's okay. You can use 
a piece of printer paper. These are, near as makes no difference, perfectly square. So you line it up along your new perfect straight edge. You can feel with your fingers to make sure it's straight. And then draw right there. Now we know that this is a perfect, sorry, a perfect 90 degree. So we'll go ahead and cut that. Alright, so what we've got here now is a perfect factory edge 90 degree corner and we can measure off of either side and we'll know that we're going to get the same distance. We're not going to have a, uh, a tilted sort of rectangle if you, if you follow what I mean. Right, I'm going to check the chat, see what's going on here. What tiles are you making? We're making a corner tile. So we're going to make this right here. Uh, bottom of the overlay. Whoops. Yep. I messed up the overlay. I forgot to update that. Oh, well, uh, I'm not going to break up the flow just for that. Thanks for pointing it out though. All right. So <clears throat> let's see what else was here. I really like the one and a quarter inch space, but hate that my Hearst arts molds are basically incompatible. Yeah, that's, that's tough. It, they are, um, Unfortunately, Hearst doesn't doesn't make parts where you can do a one and a quarter, but these solve the gameplay issues that Hearst Arts has. Um, all right. The music is cited at the beginning of every episode. This is called Lord of the Land by Kevin McLeod. All right, so um, again, if this is a one and a quarter inch game space, sorry. Let me make sure I'm centered here. Then that means the overall tile is two and a half inches. So the idea is in your maps, where a square usually represents 10 feet, or at least it did in old school maps, the idea here is that one tile is a 10 foot area and there's four game spaces in it. So no matter what, your tile will always have a dimension of two and a half by two and a half inches. We're not gonna cut our foundation at two and a half inches. And the reason is because of the wall thickness. So let's look at what we're gonna use for that. This is a used and cut up piece of chipboard. So I'm gonna try and get put this on edge. This is chipboard. This is like the stuff you find at the back of a legal pad. It's that gray brown stuff. I like it because it's sturdy considering its uh, thickness. This is Graphix, G-R-A-F-I-X, Graphix Medium Chipboard. You can find it on Amazon. And uh, I buy these 25 sheet, 12 by 12 inch reams for like eight bucks. And this will last for years. But this stuff has a thickness of a 16th of an inch. So, if we attach it to the sides, that means we need to subtract a sixteenth of an inch from both directions. I know I'm using Imperial. I find it ridiculous too. Old habits die hard. What can I say? <clears throat> so, uh, we're going to do two and a half minus a sixteenth. So that's two and seven sixteenths. And we'll measure off of one edge to two spots and then connect them. Oops, missed a little bit. There we go. And then off that line, again, two and a half light by a sixteenth of an inch. So two and seven sixteenths, and there we go. All right, so we'll go ahead and cut that out. Again, when you're cutting double corrugated cardboard, uh, three or four passes, depending how fresh your knife is. All right, now we got our foundation, and uh, we can go ahead and check it here. We can see it's going to be just the right size. All right, we'll check the chat here for a sec.
Zoom in on the metal ruler, sure. So <clears throat> here you can see uh, this webcam is not fantastic, but um, it's not quite two and a half. It's two and seven sixteenths of an inch. And really, it's two and you're going to subtract whatever the thickness of your chipboard is. If the tile is slightly less or more than two and a half, about a sixteenth less will drastically affect the final result. Um, if it's less, you'll have some slight gaps. However, the reason I paint them the way I do, and the spaces provide elevation, so they, they do a good job of hiding the seam. When you put them all next to each other, you don't really see the seams because the paint job is so chaotic and you have the texture of the spaces that any issues with the seams is, is kind of obscured. It's kind of nice, so that's why I do it that way. Template built for general construction? Yes, I do. It's uh, it's a, just do a screen grab. It's in episode one or two. I, th I think it's in episode two. So I always provide a slide in the episode in the video itself, and it tells you all the dimensions you need. All right. Now let's get our chipboard. And we'll cut our walls. Again, graphics medium chipboard. <clears throat> so the overall is, again, two and a half inches. So that's what we're going to do. Two and a half, and two and a half. And then a little tip for making cutting easier. I've got my two marks drawn right here. I'm going to put the tip of the knife on one of them. Then I'm going to slide the ruler up to it and pivot the ruler till I see it cover the other mark. Okay, this this may seem like a nuanced thing, but it's a lot easier than trying to get in here and line it up to both of them exactly, um, especially with the, with the light shining and the shadow. So put your knife on a mark, stick it, and then pivot until you see the other one hit. All right. So that's two and a half, and then uh, I like my walls to be three quarters of an inch in height. The height of the walls is important because when you eventually get to doing clip-on features, you want to have a universal standard for yourself. I experimented with one inch high walls and even higher. I think that proportionally, three quarters just kind of, it just feels it just feels right in proportion to the rest of the size of the tile. Also, the taller you go, the more unstable it is. This thing is rock solid. I couldn't, I mean, you really gotta try to break it. But, uh, so anyway, three quarters of an inch tall. So, we're gonna need two of them. So I'll measure three quarter, three quarter. Three quarter. And we'll cut these. going on here let's see John R is on hey John all right I'll take I'm just gonna check on something real quick here how's the light um, right now I have my my light swung over but if I move it to here all right is uh, is this notably better for light and picture clarity better so I'll just keep it here it's blazing in my face but that's all right <laughs> uh, have you ever sliced your finger yes once only once and that was all I needed what I was doing that's a good uh, safety tip so I was really moving I was production lining I was moving really fast making a whole bunch of these and I was you know, moving on move over and cut and it jumped over the ruler and it uh, went over just like that so split this open um, my wife was out of town uh, so I had to deal with it myself and almost passed out because I'm a wuss all right so anyway 
we've got our two walls and we've got our foundation. So, we've got our hot glue gun. This is the one Scotty uses. I recommend it too. The CC better. I like the edges that have the exposed corrugation instead of this way because it really sucks up the hot glue and it provides a lot of surface area for contact so it's really strong. Just like that. Now you might be wondering, we didn't cut the foundation at two and a half, but we did cut the wall at two and a half. So why, why is that? Why does it work? And you'll see, I kind of, maybe you can see it. There's a teensy bit of overhang on each side. Okay. It, it really doesn't matter. And when you're dealing with cardboard, these things just kind of start to work out. Uh, let's attach the other side. Okay, just hold that so it cools right, and then uh, you can see what I did at the corner, and so here, see there's a tiny bit of overhang on this, so all I do is chop that off. Actually what I do is when I cut these I've gotten to the point where it's all memorized and I can just I, I cut them to the right length, but for simplicity, uh, just to illustrate it, that's that's why I did it. So now we should be able to take our ruler and see with the new thickness of the wall, we have an overall width of two and a half. And we do. Good. All right, what's going on in chat? Double corrugated cardboard, I get it from shipping boxes or from trifold project display boards like Office Max or Staples. That's a good tip. Cut diagonally across the corrugation. Yeah, nice. Editing software. I use Blender to put the episodes together. For this live cast, I'm doing, uh, I use OBS Studio. All right, now we're going to get, whoa. <laughs> Sorry. All right, sorry about that. Uh, this thing, people often ask what this is. I, I don't know the proper name for it, but I mean, it's a paper cutter. So we go on Amazon and search for paper cutter. Um, this is black, thin cardstock. It's very thin. It's a little thicker than printer paper. It's 60 pound cardstock. I got it at Michael's. And I like it because it's black, so it's already primed. Um, I also use this for my cardstock miniatures so that I don't have to take a sharpie to the edges afterwards. It's already black. It saves me that. But this stuff is is thin enough that it has a negligible thickness as far as our tile is concerned, but uh, but strong enough that it, it takes glue well. So I like it. Uh, measure out a quarter inch strip. I've gotten to the point where I can pretty much do it by sight, but measure out a quarter inch and then we're going to cut it. And this is what I call corrugation cladding in my episodes. So we'll take this and hot glue it on. If you were making one of uh, DM Scotty's tiles, you'd have built like eight of them by now. I, I carry no illusions that mine are needlessly complex. Just like that.
chop off the excess and there we go so we got a nice nice base going here all right what are you guys talking about let's see difference between chipboard and cardstock chipboard is much thicker much sturdier it's the, the gray brown stuff that you find at the back of a legal pad but you can buy it separately and that's what I do again for anyone just joining this is uh, graphics medium chipboard from Amazon yes the corrugation cladding can be construction paper it can be printer paper it can be anything printer paper is a little thinner so the heat of the glue will go through a little more just be careful when you attach it but All right. <clears throat> Next, Dollar Store foam board. This is the stuff from Dollar Tree. The brand is Ready Board. R E A D I dash board. This is the stuff that the paper. Well, the paper used to peel off well. It seems like in recent months they've changed their glue or their formula or something because it's everyone's complaining that it's harder to get off. But anyways. Double corrugated cardboard is a quarter inch thick. We did a three quarter inch tall wall, which means that the uh, brickwork inside needs to be a half inch. So we'll measure out half inch strips and cut it. When you're cutting this stuff, you want to go slow and have a fresh knife because otherwise it will tear, tear the foam. And don't approach it at a hard angle like this. You want to be very shallow angle like this, and you'll uh, that'll help to not tear. Okay. And let's just uh, at this point we know what this should be, right? It should be two and seven sixteenths of an inch, but I just like to verify and measure for real what it is. Yep. Two and seven sixteenths. And once that's in there, we know that I'm just going to dry fit it. Take this piece, butt it up against there, and mark where it's going to where it's going to end. See how I did that? So you dry fit this like it's going to actually be, and then you can see for real. Rather than bothering to measure, it's a lot easier to dry fit it and just mark. Alright, so here's our wall, our uh, brickwork. I'm going to peel the paper off of one side and it's not coming off very well. Darn. Riveting television, I know. Alright, I think I got it all. That one came off easy. All right. Now to texture these, here's what I do. <clears throat> uh, find the center of it lengthwise, and I'm going to score down the middle of it. Not cut all the way through, but I'm going to score just so I can feel it biting at the material. Just enough. Okay. Then take it and about every, I don't know, half inch or so, I'm just going to cut in a groove on one side of the line and the same on the other side of it but offset so it's in the middle of all the the other sides and I'll try here's you kind of see what I'm talking about it's a low resolution camera but it looks like any offset brick pattern very simple and then I'll take a ballpoint pen or a pencil or something and trace where the or chase where the knife went just to widen the cracks if you tear the foam a little bit it's okay that's just more character for the dungeon okay so here here's what it looks like after you widen it 
And then uh, if you if you want to use hot glue, you can, but you need to use a little bit of it and you need to move fast because the hot glue cools quickly and it will create thickness that you don't want. So the wall is going to be thicker than you want. If you're worried about it, just use an extra strength glue stick like, uh, like this or white PVA glue. It takes a little longer, it's not instant, but then you don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to apply hot thin beads of hot glue and quickly get it in there and attached. Okay. And for the other one we're going to texture this one the same way as well. and widen the cracks. This should be the most boring part. There we go. And I'm out of hot glue. Okay. All right, so we're doing well. We're moving into a good clip here. When you're making a whole batch of, you know, dozens of these, you obviously don't make them one at a time. Cut all your foundations, cut all your walls, cut all your bricks, um, all at one time, and assembly line it. When you do that, after you get in a groove, it, it goes much faster than you would think. It's still not fast, but it goes faster than you would think. All right. Um, Tell you what, we got to get some paint on here so that it starts drying because this is going to be a wet coat. So let's do that right now and then we'll go do the game spaces. So I'll do this and then I'm going to pause and check out the chat. So I'm going to have to figure this out. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is just Americana, ebony black. I like Americana better than Folk Art and Craft Smart. I think it's the most expensive of the three, but it's also the best. All right, um, getting it into these nooks and crannies is is difficult with a dry brush. So load up the brush with water. Make sure it's nice and wet. Okay, and then get your paint and then splay it on there and the black will just work its way into the recesses real nicely into all the cracks. You don't have to spend time, you know, stabbing at it at every single one. It just works its way down in there. Okay. Rocking. All right. So we got some black on there. And then uh, what I've got here is a small fan. It's powered by two C cell batteries. This, uh, we got this at the hospital when my daughter was born. But um, I use this to, uh, oh, the batteries are dead. <laughs> of course. Anyway, I usually, I have a drying station. So I put this in front of the fan and uh, it'll dry much quicker. So, um, I'll be back in 30 seconds, just gonna go wash up and then I'll check on the chat.
All right. I'm sure that's safe. So, just gonna replace this here. What's going on? Watered down black apple barrel. Oh uh, yeah, PVA on the foam. Um, I've, you know, that Scotty does that a lot, and it's certainly a good tip. It will harden and protect the foam, but uh, it's never really been an issue for me. So uh, I usually skip that. I, I've never bothered with that. Yes. This would be bad. We don't want to sit here literally watching paint dry. That's not a good live stream. Yeah, now we're talking. So I'll show you what I'm doing. This is my uh, drying station right here. It's on top of my speaker. So there's the tile that we just painted. And uh, this is gonna help it dry in about, I don't know, a quarter of the time that it normally would. Yeah, when I made 200 tiles, I thought I was losing my mind. Yes, wow, 200 tiles, that's a lot. That's uh, that's 800 spaces, but really it's 1,600 squares because there's two each, wow. I bought true tiles recently, cool, thank you. getting some buffering All right <clears throat> okay let us move on to the game spaces now uh, in the in the episodes proper I recommended to use chipboard again the exact same stuff and you certainly can it looks fine but I, I sort of felt in hindsight that it looked a little bulky, a little blocky, too thick. So what I use nowadays is cereal box cardstock. This stuff is a, quite a bit thinner than chipboard, but still not like paper. So um, this is what I use for the game spaces themselves. All right, so. Again, we need to do the uh, return to square trick because this is just um, just scrap. Cut that off, and then this time I will use my carpenter square just because I can. Oh, forgot the light. Let me move the light back over here. There we go. Alright, so just like we talked about at the beginning of the episode, now I've returned it to square. I've got a perfect factory 90 degree corner here. So, uh, the game spaces, to quickly recap. It's simply a one and a quarter inch square with a smaller square on top of it. So each space is actually two um, of the squares of material. So for a corner, we're going to need four of each. So one and a quarter inch. And we'll measure out. One and a quarter, one and a quarter, one and a quarter, one and a quarter. You have to be a bit of an anal retentive person to enjoy doing this stuff, I think. 
or a bit of a masochist. I don't, I don't know. All right. So cut these out and for these short lines, I'm just going to chop them with scissors. It's a small enough cut that it's fine. Oh, I just realized the fan is right next to this thing. Is the the noise of the fan bothering anybody? Okay, now what we're going to do with these, take your scissors and we're simply going to round off the corners a little bit. Don't go crazy with this. You can always take more off. It depends on the style you want. I like not much rounding at all. I like this, the tile to generally still be of a square shape. So I only nip off a tiny little bit. I've seen other people post pictures and stuff with big rounded corners and they, they look great. It's just, it's whatever style you're look, going for, whatever you, you want. Um, you could even cut these to be very irregular. You could uh, cut away at some sides and make like a uh, broken flagstone kind of look. I'm going to stick with uh, my bread and butter. So I round off the corners. There we go. And then I'm just going to add some kind of interesting feature to these. So for this one, I'm just going to give it a crack. Just going to cut. See, I just cut a little bit into it. That's it. For this one, I'm going to cut out a chip like that and for this one I'll also do a chip and for this one I won't do anything so we have some nice variety three different styles to pick from put those aside and now we need the smaller squares which rest on top these I generally do just an eighth of an inch less so we're gonna measure out Instead of one and a quarter, we're going to do one and an eighth. And a one and an eighth. Oh, you know what? The ruler slid on me. I'm going to try that again. Really got to pin it down when you cut. For you metric users, sensible people, this is uh, 28 millimeters. One and a quarter would be 31 millimeters, approximately. One and an eighth, one and an eighth, one and an eighth, and one and an eighth. And we'll chop these. So again, I'm working with cereal box right now. Cereal box is thinner than chipboard. Still takes paint very well. Um, what I like about it is the gray side is fibrous, so it takes glue and paint really well. Again, I'm just going to round off these corners. And then I'm going to add a feature to them. So maybe a cut and a cut and a chip. That should do. 
All right. Let's see what you guys are talking about here. Scott Buchanan, getting the itch myself to return to crafting. Well, you should, brother. And you and I have the same last name. Let's see. I'll scroll up a bit and see what's going on. Five hundred tiles? Jesus. My fingers hurt thinking about that. All right. Okay. So now, very simply, we're just going to take a big square. Yeah, make sure I can see. Yeah. Got our big squares and our small squares. We're going to take a big square and we're going to glue a small square to it. That's a little bit of hot glue and attach it so it's centered. And that's what you get. You get a nice um, 2D thing. You get an edge there in case you want a dry brush. Something to make it interesting. Try not to attach like features to each other. So mix up the, uh, the chips and the cracks. Just like that. And this one. Good. Those are our spaces. And now we're just going to base these again with black. I'm going to use a fairly dry, uh, a dry brush. I'm not going to wet it at all so that there's no water in the mix here and these will dry really fast. Basically, almost, they'll dry almost instantly on this, uh, this chipboard which just sucks up the paint so well. When you assembly line these, I usually um, spray paint this part. I line all of them up on some paper in the garage and I black spray paint with the, the $1 stuff. All right, so we got our game spaces. Uh, let's check on our, let's see, our dungeon tiles looking pretty good. It looks like I used a little too much water here. I can see some foam through it. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, tidy that up. Put some black on it and that should dry very quickly with no water added so i'll put that up here i'll be back in 30 seconds just gonna go wash up and then i'll see what you guys are talking about Let's see here. Uh, Dave Forsyth, the, the spray paint I get is from Lowe's. It's a dollar and nine cents and it's black. It's, uh, it's called Project Source. Any reason not to assemble before painting? Yes, there is. And uh, you'll see why in a sec. Basically, we're going to be uh, sponging and it's very hard to get um, deep into where you need to with the sponge with the spaces already attached so you end up with this this inner edge of where you couldn't reach and it's just black and it doesn't look very good
craft foam for the game squares. Yes, um, I think it's episode 21 or something. It's called Castle Tiles, where I did use that. I've used the dollar store foam board. I, I would change a few things about the way that I did it, but not many other people have done it much better. All right, let's, uh, as they say, as the British guys say in their tutorials, let's crack on. I've got some dark gray and some light gray. Any brand will do. This is uh, what I have sitting around, so we'll use that. Got a plain old kitchen sponge. Just gonna cut a piece of it free. And I'm gonna start with the dark gray. So, what would I change about the castle tiles? What I would change is I did them the same way with the foundations. So I had a quarter inch thick foundation and then the, the dollar store foam board, foam board is like really thick. So I had that on top. So basically the walls only had a tiny bit of them sticking. It was like a quarter inch tall wall. What I should have done is mount it to chipboard. So I would use the, this for the foundation and attach the foam board to this and that gives you an overall thickness of a quarter inch and then it, it would have made it up with these much better. All right, so <clears throat> I'm gonna take my dark gray first, get a good bunch of it there. And then, actually this is a little big, I'm going to cut it down a bit. Um, so dip, your, dip the sponge in it, and then you want to wipe off a good amount. If you don't wipe off of any, you're going to get basically a solid blotch of gray, and you don't want that. The more you wipe off, the more you'll get like a fine speckle, like a granite sort of look. I don't want that, I want something a little heavier, so I, I dip it, I work a bunch of it off, and then go at it. So I wanna be sure to hit the, the sides because it's easy to miss them, so sides, and then a dab in the center, just like that. Okay, here's another one. I'm gonna go sides. and a dab, a good dab in the center. See, you wouldn't be able to get these edges if you had already attached them to the tile. More paint, work some of it off. All right, so you can see we're aiming for I don't know, 80% coverage. You you cover a fairly good amount of the black, but you shouldn't have it should it should have a, a fairly good speckle effect to it. Now while we're at it, while we have our gray, the tile is pretty much dry. So carefully as you can, you load up the sponge, work some of it off, and you want to get it down in so it's perfectly so you can move in perfectly perpendicular and get the bricks. So, just like that. And actually, I laid, eh, I laid it on a little bit heavy here. That's okay. Okay, second wall went better. All right, uh, in addition to that, we're gonna do just the tops of the walls. And we'll get the sides, of course. Rotate the sponge so that you have no repeating patterns showing up or anything. Just like that. And then the corrugation cladding, the exposed, these ends here. Just like that. So basically you've done it to everything except the black area here in the middle. Okay, what about putting a design onto the sponge before dabbing it? Uh, you could do that if you want to, certainly. Um, for the bricks, I don't think the bricks, 
are their own texture. So I don't think you need it for that. But if you want, you know, to have something cool on the outside here, certainly you could do that. Cut somehow, uh, put a pattern or, or make a stamp like Scotty does. All right. Um, I'm just going to work out the bulk of the rest of this. I don't need to cut a new sponge. I'm just going to go to the light gray now. Pour some out and uh, just use the same sponge. It's fine. Just work most of it out. For this one, our application is going to be a bit, is going to be notably lighter. Okay. Um, so we'll work it off on the paper. And then I'm not going to press hard. I'm just going to lightly dab. You can always add more. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like that. And there. So you're aiming for about, I don't know, 30% coverage with this lighter gray. I wish this camera were a higher resolution. You can't see it very well. Maybe down here is better. Okay, so again, we'll get some on. Work it off. And light, light dabbing. It's fairly loaded with paint, but I'm just not pressing hard. I'm just coming in and out real fast. Particularly with these cheap Craft Smart paints, you want, I think that uh, you overcome their lack of pigmentation and contrast by, by applying it boldly. So this isn't a fine speckle, it's a fairly coarse speckle. Okay, uh, just like we did before, we're going to work some of it off and we're going to lightly apply it. There. Oh, I like that. That came out nicely. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but it's it's like uh, it's not a full coat. It's a nice highlight almost. Early on, before I knew what I was doing, I was uh, trying dry brushing and stuff and Whenever I would dry brush something, it would just become overwhelmed. It would become dusty um, because I wasn't happy with it. So I would go up to a lighter shade and eventually just plain white and it would overwhelm because because I don't know what I'm doing. So uh, this has no dry brushing involved. It's just sponging. And on the outside, similarly, light application. There we go. All right. So I've sponged everything. And now guys, we are pretty close to done. So I'm just gonna pause for a second, see what you're talking about. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Brown, any kind of brown will do. Well, I, I won't say that. You you want a rich brown, not necessarily a bright brown, but I don't think you should use burnt umber. I like to use this is literally brown, Craft Smart brown, and uh, it, it'll give us a nice the pop that we want. So I'm going to take a smaller brush, pour out some brown, and all I'm going to do now is pick out maybe two or three bricks per wall and paint it brown. Full coverage, don't need to stipple, don't need to sponge it, just give it a full coverage, no problem. And if you do a top, if you do one of the ones on the top row, be sure and go over the top like this. Okay. Get one in the corner here. So that's three on that wall, and then on this wall, I'm gonna do like one here. And maybe one down here. I'll just do two of them on this wall. That's fine. Mix it up. Don't always do three per wall. Do anywhere from two to four of them per wall. And when you do that, after you get a whole bunch of them um, put together, you get a nice unorganized, non-repeating look, which is nice. What size detail brush here for the brown? Uh, I have no idea. It's <laughs> it's small. Uh, I think I think in wargaming they would call it a regiment brush, but and any brush that's small enough to just get a solid coat on there. 
These tiles, the, I mean, these bricks are fairly big. It's not even a detail brush. Is it zero, zero, zero? I don't know the sizes. I'm sorry. I don't know my stuff. Lightly sponge brown over the spaces. Yeah, that's a good idea. You could do green if you wanted moss. I've seen a lot of people do a lot of different things. I haven't done any of it myself, but um, that's a really good idea. All right. Our game spaces should be dry. We're going to take this and put it aside. <clears throat> All right. Last thing to do is attach these and then we're done. So always begin with the known thing and not just for this tile, but whenever you're doing precision work, we know that the space that goes in this corner is a full space. So let's put that on first. We'll put it on, we'll feel and make sure it's up against the two edges perfectly. And from that, that'll be our gauge and we'll go from there. So a little bit of hot glue. Yes, the hot glue will stick to that black paint fine enough. And as I put it on, I've got about a second or two to adjust it if I need to. All right, I use the pads of my fingers to feel and run it along and make sure that it feels flush. Now, the math says this should be an inch, so we should have to chop off a quarter inch of this, right? See how it's there. Um, but it may be a little bit less than that considering we're working with cardboard here and it's, it's not perfect. I wouldn't sweat it too much. Take your scissors, eyeball about a quarter of an inch, and just chop it off. And then we'll dry fit it, and that looks good. So we're going to attach it. I guess if you focus on the precision stuff early on and your foundation is good, then you have a lot more room for error on all the decorative stuff. The foundation is really what's important. The overall tile needs to be two and a half by two and a half. Again, for this space, I'll just cut off a quarter inch. There we go. And the last one should be one inch, so I'm gonna chop off a quarter going one way, and then rotate it and chop off a quarter going the other way. Dry fit to make sure it's gonna, well, I know it's gonna work. <laughs> you do these enough. There we go. So there you have it. One completed Wylock Corner Dungeon Tile. Easy. Um, show this to you next, next to some of these other ones. So again, if you're new to this or you haven't seen my channel before, the, uh, the advantage being you can, you know, assemble whatever, whatever arrangements of 10 foot spaces you want and a one inch miniature will always be able to fit, even against a wall. So don't think of this as 10 feet. Think of it as four game spaces. I generally don't, I don't worry about scale or anything. Uh, the walls are a quarter inch thick. They're always a quarter inch thick, so you can make things that clip on. I don't have one handy with, well, stand by one sec. So, here's some examples of clip-on features I've made. This is just a metal door, like a steampunk thing, and you can see this clip here, this area, that's a quarter inch wide and a half inch tall. Remember, our, our walls are a quarter inch wide and a half inch tall. So this clips right on there very nicely. Here's a, uh, an evil portal type of thing. I think this was episode 14, maybe? I don't remember. But, again, Clips right on, no problem. And an angelic portal, its counterpart, right? So whatever you can imagine, as long as it has a half inch tall, quarter inch wide clip, it'll go on. Uh, you can even use it to, to bridge the gap between tiles and sort of help to hold them together, see? All 
All right, so yeah, this is our corner tile that we just made. All right, so um, I'm gonna go wash up. I'll be back in 30 seconds and uh, we'll do some chat. see what are you guys talking about whoa come down a bit here used your in two weeks oh, okay cool yeah a lot of people like that that episode uh, lava waterfall interesting I do have plans for a working waterfall with a small pump in the future your true tiles have a clip on to keep these tiles from sliding any plan to do that for these um, I've thought about it, but uh, no, not really. Sliding isn't really an issue um, for me, at least in my experience. So for the crafted ones, uh, no. That said, I mean, they're, they're, they're the same size, so they're compatible size-wise. It's just, if you want to do the clip, I don't think you'll have much success. For the castle tiles, do you mean I should put the chipboard under both the foam board and the walls, or just the foam? Um, did not think that far ahead, but basically, for those, I would say don't do the walls this way. Use double corrugated cardboard on its edge as the walls, because it also is a quarter inch thick. Original clip on the playing card. I only use the playing card when, when it's necessary because it's much flimsier than than those. And it, if it's not tensioned the right way, they can you know fall apart or, or spread apart. Uh, the paint that I use in my videos, I get them from Michaels. Um, any crafting store should have them. They're just the cheap, you know, dollar, two dollar ones sliding uh, I used to add pennies to the bottom that worsened the problem because I played on a wood table and the pennies were like really slick so I, I took the pennies back off but then I found the hot glue that had been smashed on there by the penny made a good rubber foot sort of so near the channel uh, did you make Warhammer 40k tiles etc uh, no, I made some sci-fi tiles. I, it was, I don't know, 10 episodes ago or something. You could use them for 40k if you wanted, I guess for, uh, uh, what's it called? Necromunda? I'm not sure. Do you build characters like dragons? No, I have zero, like, art training. I can't draw a humanoid or a figure to save my life. That's why I make my own miniatures using Google Image Search. Um, so I can't sculpt any sort of like organic figure. Trenches, yep, trenches are coming up. Two or three episodes. Plan for more buildings. Um, yeah, uh, sci-fi kind of stuff. Felt with an adhesive back. Yep, I've seen people do that. So, uh, question for you guys: What would you want to see in the next master class?
this only took us an hour or so, which I kind of like. I I get fatigued sometimes and just want to, you know, get focused and, and see the information. So I tend to be maybe concise to a fault. Mech suits and sci-fi easier or land and organics? Definitely the sci-fi stuff. Any kind of robot or mech something that uh, I mean that that's easy to me. You can reproduce it, cut, cut bits out of foam and beads. Clip on terrain would love more ideas. Yep, um, I I have some, and if you have any, go ahead and share them here or on the Facebook page or whatever, because. Every so often I'll do another one of those clip-on features ones, like the one I did last week. Dungeon bit pieces, yeah. Cardboard mini master class, yeah we could do that. Sewers, those are complex, but we got this one done in an hour, so I'm sure I could do that. Cottage for next masterclass. That one, that one took me like two weeks. Part of that is because I'm filming it as I go, and figuring out how to do it at the same time. So it, it takes a long time, but still, that would, that's a big project. Fiberglass resin. That'll do it. <laughs> Might be a little overkill for tabletop terrain, but it'll last forever. That's, that's for sure. You ever do uneven stuff? A rough hewn or natural cavern? Yep, check episode 21, I think. I did a cave one, a cavern one, and a mine one. So those are three of them to check out. They're, I don't remember which episodes they are, but just check my playlists, look at my backlog, and you'll see the, uh, the cavern ones. Dirt or cobble. Temples. Oh, so I haven't done a new tile style in a while because I hadn't been uh, in inspired by much of anything, but I did have need for like uh, a palace or something really ornate, something really intricate. So it would take a while to make these, but um, those would work for like a temple. Can you make a platform like a wooden dock or a raised area for miniatures to go on? Yep, I did that. Check episode... Uh, playlists. All episodes. Episode 48 for the uh, storage platform for loot and miniatures. Necron Monolith for a temple, yep. yep. Fancy throne room tile. I did the throne clip-on. That was uh, episode 52. Yeah, the throne clip-on, but that's not a dedicated tile, per se. Uh, Scotty did um, the profane and divine stamps. Um, that's kind of the thing that I was, I was aiming at. So again, if, uh, if you guys have pictures of stuff that you've made from the channel, feel free to post it on the Facebook group and uh, I'll include it in a future episode. More isometric drawing tutorials. More. Um, well, the one sort of demonstrated the theory. I'm not, what you get, Matt, there, uh, Corin. I know if episode 41 I did the isometric maps
yeah, Wolf Den. Show me what you, once you get there, show me what you're working on. Uh, marble looking floor tiles. Uh, no, not specifically. What I would recommend is pick your two colors for the marble and do them real similar to like we just did. Um, you'll find real quickly you can master how much paint is on the sponge and if you do a, a really coarse with your second color, you could make it look like marble. So do like a beige with a green, uh, green marbling on it. Oh, a hanging garden. That's a neat idea. I'll add that to the list. What do you mean by master class? Are there different tile systems or types? Oh, just master class is... All I mean by that is uh, my uh, live, live stream tutorial these things, that's all. Um, I'm able to go into a lot more detail. For example, the tip about cutting, you know, planting your knife and pivoting the ruler. Real, real minute tips that wouldn't make it into an episode because it would make the episode too long. So I get into work notes on precision and stuff like that. I'm gonna start posting vids. I've come with. Oh, cool. Good, good. Good luck with your channel. More channels are always good. Wolf Den Gaming. Egyptian Flare. Yep, I've already got a pro prototype of that, actually. Modular Castle Towers. That I'm working on a prototype of that as well. Matt Corville's. No. I'll add it to my notepad. You know what, just for posterity, because this is driving me crazy. I'm going to fix the overlay. And done. All right. <laughs> uh, so unprofessional. And now it's there for the first hour. Oh, this is going to drive me crazy. Do you guys want to do this whole thing over again? <laughs> Tiled arena yet. Uh, no, I generally don't do um, bigger set pieces. I really like dungeon crawl, so if I'm playing D&D, I like to run a dungeon crawl, not necessarily uh, um, anything else. For my wargaming terrain, I'm, I might look at doing that. Trebuchet's catapults, yep, that's on the list. It's as a, uh, a wargame mini, but you could certainly use it for, for your RPG. A water floor split tile. That question comes up sometimes. I didn't bother with that because a lot of permutations are needed. If you really wanted to do it, you certainly could. You just do what we did today, but only add two game spaces and paint the rest blue. Um, I, I guess I've just never really uh, had a need for that. It certainly would look better. It does look better than just having the square water tile right up against it. But you know what? I revisited other things, but that's so water, water edge tiles basically is what you're getting at. Multiple level dungeons on a single table? No, I haven't. Uh, never really had a need. I do, I mostly home. I only homebrew, and uh, generally don't have multi multi level designs. Do, do, water pump. What about other FX type stuff? I uh, hadn't thought about anything additional to that. The um, After I did the custom lighting stuff a couple months ago, then my next thought was it'd be neat to do something with actual running water on the table. 
glow-in-the-dark paint. Campsite. Combat arena. Yep, water edges. Bridges. Alright. Yeah, and the popsicle and actually that popsicle technique is not mine, it's Curafin's. Um, my partner who uh, who does true tiles with me. That's all that was his technique actually. Caravans. Yeah, you know, the uh, what is it? The code of the craft, right? Use this. Make stuff that you're going to use. Don't make. Don't waste your time making it for the sake of making it. Some things I do like just making because it's fun. But um, I'm going to do an editorial soon about why, if you haven't tried wargaming before and you're only a, a tabletop role player, you should give wargaming a, a shot. Because I was adamant for my whole life, but. Recently, I'm a total convert. There's so many great things about it, and it opens up. I mean, I never have a reason not to make anything. So caravans, great. That's Kings of War scenery. Yep, courtyard to throne room, trading wagons. All right. tiles. So Scotty's back. That's a refreshing sight. And DMG's making video, uh, uh, crafting videos again. He's been really into his 70 system, which you should keep an eye out for if you hear about it. But now he's making some crafting videos again. What else is going on out there? Susky, he's doing the wizard's towel tower. Um, what about floor tiles that are broken up and open to a pit? Yep, got that on the list. War games that I play: uh, Kings of War, which is the um, spiritual successor to Warhammer Fantasy after they discontinued Warhammer Fantasy. And uh, I play Grim Dark Future, which is a fan-made condensation of Warhammer 40k. Yep, new items for bids. Hey, if you guys have picks you want to share, feel free to put them in the chat or a link to them in the chat or whatever. I don't know what the chat is capable of. <laughs> Modular walls could be useful, ones that would be movable to encircle something, if that makes sense. Um, modular walls, I'm, I'm not quite sure I follow. Way before the channel started, I did have separate walls from the body of the tile, and uh, it did not work, at least the way that I tried it, because of the, the weight. They're so lightweight. Chat won't allow links. Yeah, okay. Scorching embers. Yeah, so generally, you I mean, you could uh, trick this corner we made. You could trick it up with any kind of cool stuff you mean, or cool stuff you want. Hex true tiles for outdoors. Considered. Uh, jury's still out. But I've been considering it for a year, so <laughs> I don't know if that's going to go anywhere. We'll see. <sighs> Work's been crazy the past month. I haven't had... Uh, much time at all so really coming off of an adrenaline rush a 30-day adrenaline rush all right so just thinking here if there's any 
neat stuff I could show you guys before wrapping it up. Uh, if you found the our uh, class here helpful, feel free to check out my Patreon if you want to. And again, if you want to share your stuff on my Facebook page, feel free to. And I'll include it in a future episode. Ah, Adventure Monitor. So, uh, yeah, hold on to that. Alright, so I'm wondering who stuck it out the most tonight. So I'm in East Coast, USA. Um, who is furthest around the world from, from me right now? I know that Britain was on. Brazil? Alright. Yep, probably. <laughs> okay, path through the woods. Yep. London. All right. Cool. Have you ever considered built custom mecha minis like clockwork golems and stuff? Um, all right. This is the first time I've mentioned this to anyone, but I've I have a a game that I've worked on for years, and it's probably never going to go anywhere. But it's uh, it's sort of like BattleTech. It, it's mechas, but a huge part of the game is the cr building your own models um, and and having them be what you see is what you get. So the rules describe what they look like, and um, you build your own out of beads or foam or whatever. And uh, so yes, I have considered that. Athens, Greece. Right. Cool. Well, thanks to everybody from wherever you're from for uh, joining tonight. Okay. So, thank you for all the ideas. Um, I think I have an idea what we'll do for our next master class. I'm going to try and do these probably once a month or so. Um, and uh, feel free to post on the Facebook page if Thursday nights don't work. Thursday nights work good for me. Weekends are kind of family time. But, uh, yep, and thank you for tuning in. So, all right. Good night, guys. Take care. <laughs>